growing up it used to be so nice here so beautiful around here it's, uh, you know but that will never be again that will never happen again never women would get together to prepare the fishing nets and men made canoes for the fishers to catch fish with after settlements started in the mid 1850s the fishing industry provided an income for the Anishinaabek as well as sustenance. Back in the 50s, 40s, when they used to go hunting, and they just had to go, go within the community to go get their most deer. That's how abundant it was, and now we can't even find anything nearby. Lake St. Martin was once home to the buffalo and other hunting and agricultural activities. People lived well and sustainably. We are being evacuated from our community and we were told we, were, we cannot take anything other than our, our very least bits of clothing. In May 2011, Lake St. Martin First Nation Reserve was inundated by a devastating but avoidable flood. Lake St. Martin First Nation, a community of 2,000 people, was permanently displaced. They want to do more hydro projects where they can make money on our water. You know, our lands are flooded while they make money on us. Now they're sitting back and, and as we're suffering, we're displaced from our homes. Like we're, we're, we're like refugees. So you know, what are you supposed to live on now? We can't live here, we can't come back here. The, the land is, is no good anymore. We've lost our traditional way of life, but we've also lost our culture. The flood of 2011 at Lake St. Martin First Nation was artificial, but with real dire consequences. The community was permanently displaced from their homes, losing their livelihoods, health, and socio-cultural integrity. The government chose to use the control structure to flood people with a deep history to the land. 